Hi guys, this is my beautiful fig tree. It was only about a foot tall when I purchased it last year at Home Depot. It's just basically a twig, but it's really like this spot. And what I wanted to talk to you today was a great practice to do at the end of the growing season, and that is chop and drop. I wanna show you down on the ground. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I chopped and dropped a tomato plant that was nearby, and I just put it around the tree as sort of a mulch, and it has died back, and all of that is going to break down into nutrition for the plant. Remember, if you live in a, an originally forested area, plants are constantly dropping, they're dying or they're dropping foliage, and all of that is breaking down on top of the soil and making rich layers of nutrients. So I'm going to mimic that in my garden by taking the things I've cultivated and just chopping them up in place. I do have a compost heap as well, but this is the time of year where I really just like to put everything where it is if I'm planning to, on growing next year. And as the years go by, it's going to create a very rich soil, much like the forest floor. And over here I still have some chopping to do, but I pulled out a zucchini plant, which by the way never made a zucchini for me. I was very disappointed. So certain things I'm not going to grow next year. I'm just going to grow what I'm good at. Um, I did get some nice tomatoes this year, but this is early autumn and um, everything all my annual vegetables are starting to die back, but that's gonna break down and feed that hydrangea plant. I've put it in a close proximity there. It was growing actually right where it is, but I may move it over a little bit and make sure that my hydrangea benefits from the nutrition that will break down into the soil. Okay, so along the polytunnel, I've practiced the same chop and drop technique I had some cherry tomato plants growing there and I just chopped them up at the end of the season. Um, and it's early autumn now, so they were looking quite, quite ragged and starting to die back. We've had a few cold nights. So I basically just chopped up the plants and left them in the same area they were growing, kind of spread them out from the back of the bed out to the middle. And in addition to that, I've thrown in a few chopped up banana peels and some shredded cardboard and a little bit of clover from the lawn. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating a nice organic layer. And um, I didn't take it to a trash can and ship it off to be recycled. I'm using the benefit of that plant here and giving next spring the next spring's plants, the benefit of the nutrition, and I am mimicking the forest floor where there's lots of different layers of things broken down each season, each year, lots of different nutrient layers from the dropping of plant material on top of the surface. So by next spring, I'm thinking two seasons ahead as you often have to do, I'm learning that soil prep is a huge part of gardening and soil building. So uh, that is why I'm doing this. And it looks a little bit messy now, though it's much better than it was with the big scraggly tomato plants that were dying. Um, but all of this is going to die back and just be brown material on top, sort of a natural mulch. And um, like I said, this is going to bring me beautiful spring and summer flowers. Here's a little close-up of what I have going on here. I have some clover from the grass right next to this area. I have the chopped up tomato plants. I have a few banana peels. And I also have shredded cardboard. So all that's going to make a very nice mix, kind of compost in place on top of the soil. And I will have to fertilize a lot less next year. So guys, I hope you have an area in your yard or maybe all over your yard you can use this practice to enrich your soil. It's free fertilizer and your plants will appreciate it. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and subscribing. 
and I'll see you next time. Bye.